So I straight up crushed it today. Work was filled with meetings and different tasks that had to be done, right? I mean, that's how work is. There's things to do. Ha. And <laughs> I got it all done. And that is so rare. You usually leave work for the next day, you know, and not on purpose. It's just there's too much to do. And so it's really nice when finishing everything for the day, I'm going to come in on Monday and it's all going to be kind of blank slate ready for the next project. Amen. That is awesome. So been thinking about things wrong. Um, the wife and I were talking yesterday and I was sitting down thinking about some stuff and I've been thinking about this whole upskilling thing wrong. So instead of increasing my skills to get a more lucrative career going, which is fair, that's a way to go about things, um, you're going to upskill and get a better job. Sure, sure. But that's the wrong goal. It's the same mousetrap, the same hamster wheel, the, the same traps that I fall into. I, there's always something wrong with the job that I have, okay? And that's all on me. I, I think of it, if you want to evaluate a job on three different pillars, there's the challenge and growth opportunities in the job. There's the pay. And those are two pillars. And the third pillar is your relationships there. So are people friendly? Do you like working around them? Is it a toxic work culture? Whatever it is, those are the three things. Your relationships, challenge, and compensation. Okay. And so balancing those is important. And if any of them are at zero, you're probably not going to stay there very long because you'll be very uncomfortable. Okay. You could be in a really toxic work environment. It's like a 10 out of 100. It's, it's not doing so hot. But the pay is crazy and you feel like you're growing. Or you're challenged by it. So maybe you stick it out. Because if the challenge is that high and it, it kind of compensates for lack of people interaction, that's good. Because you're probably not interacting with people quite a bit. <laughs> but if, if multiple things are too low, you're definitely not staying in that job, right? So for me, I always find something wrong with the job. And it's usually me that either causes it or I'm just really good at noticing negative things. Whatever it is. I at this place, oh my goodness, the, the people are the opposite of friendly. <laughs> you know, I, I do not like being there. It's, it's like nails in my eyeballs because of the way people talk. Okay, so you eventually leave there. And at this place, it definitely doesn't pay enough. Like I, I have grown so far past what's necessary to complete this work that I'm worth more in another place. Uh, the market will pay me more for what I can do. So I feel like I'm wasting my time because I'm not getting enough money doing it. Okay, that's fair, whatever. And then there's other workplaces. This is the majority of the reason why I dislike different jobs I've had or have disliked them in the past, right? It's because they're not challenging enough. There's, it's just boring. And not, not boring in that you're digging a ditch because at least after you dig a ditch, there's a ditch there. Yes, that would be boring for some, but you're accomplishing something. Uh, something is there at the end. Uh, this is a kind of boredom that uh, is described really well in uh, Graeber's book, BS Jobs. It's just nothing. It's just administrative busy work. And that, that grinds my gears. I can't handle it. <laughs> and so the IT field is very good to me. It's, it's pretty good on challenge. When you specialize enough, when you have enough experience, it's pretty good on pay. And roll the dice. You know, keep your keep your mouth shut. I have a big mouth. I am not very good at double-checking what I'm writing in emails. It's definitely something I've worked on in the past and definitely ways I've messed things up in the past. Basically, just don't be rude. <laughs> Go in and smile, have a good attitude, be as frictionless as possible to work with. That's what I try to do. Because that's the hardest part for me in a workplace is the, the interpersonal relationship part. The challenge, I can learn and grow and figure out how to solve something. The pay, well, I mean, upskill enough, get more pay. All right, awesome. <laughs> but interpersonal, like I've, I've burnt bridges at jobs. And not, not by leaving and the whole company hates me. I mean like, 
you have one bad interaction with a coworker and the rest of your time there is horrible. Even after you've talked to them, you've apologized, taken responsibility for it, which you should do, it's still a burnt bridge. There's still that negativity there. And a lot of that depends on them as well and you can't control that. But you gotta be really careful in the workplace to, to not do that. So there is a, uh, a pattern in my life where I, I'm in a workplace and I just am done with that workplace. No more challenge, I figured it out. Like that's it, that's the job, I'm, I'm bored. Uh, the pay isn't enough or you're just not getting along with people. And I take responsibility for that, all right? So all, all of that aside, I've been thinking that I'm, I'm going about this the wrong way. You don't upskill to get a new job and that'll solve all your problems. That'll solve the, the boredom with the job or feeling out of place while you're there. No, 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 no. That's the same trap. You, Luke, are upskilling so that you can start your own company, so that you can build your own things. I was thinking of that along those lines as like side hustle. On the side, I'll build these projects that I enjoy, that help my family. Maybe some of them will make money, maybe, but it's more of just like a creative outlet. And that's the wrong mindset. I, there's, there's so many avenues we could go talking about this, but basically we're all, we're all walking around figuring out how to be the best W2 employees everywhere. Right, uh, I'm gonna be a good worker and get mine. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure, kind of. Um, why not just start your own business? You know, hundreds of years ago, even even a few decades ago, uh, most people were self-employed. They were artisans. They they weren't paid by the hour. They were paid by the job, and they had a specific skill set that provided for their families via interacting with the society around them. And that has shifted over that time period. I don't know what it is, 10 years, 200 years, whatever you say in the comments is right, okay? Uh, and now all of our mindsets are, you gotta be an employee, you gotta get a good job. <laughs> the only way to do it is to be employed. Well, that doesn't make any sense in, in that it's just a company you're working for. You're getting a job. Why don't you make a job? Why don't you make a company? And I've tried my hand at that in California when I was living there. It was fun. I've tried it in Oregon and Washington. There's been different venues, <laughs> different ventures of, of business starting that uh, have been successful. All of them inevitably were unsuccessful and I've learned quite a bit from that. And from the last one, I, I just felt burnt. It was just like, it was so much effort and so much time and almost nothing came out of it. There was a lot of learning, but it burnt me from the idea of go out and do your own thing. And I think that is the true failure, the giving up, the not trying again. So, Going forward this year, I want to see what I can do to produce my own money, essentially, rather than showing up, clocking in, and getting paid for that. That's, it's becoming obsolete to my mindset. And yes, I was talking about this yesterday with my wife, but it's been at the back of my mind, and it's, it's dominated my thoughts for years, right? That's why I went into those ventures over the past decade. And I'm never really happy working for someone else. Like I said, I always find something wrong with the jobs that I have. It's my own failing. I, I own that. But why not try something else? It's okay in the next five, ten years, you're still working for someone else while building this thing on the side. Sure, that seems fiscally responsible. I got kids, I'm not gonna just quit today and be like, oh, I have nothing built, so I guess I'll go drive Uber. Like, no, 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 kids gotta eat, and I, I gotta pay rent right now, so, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but 
eventually, why not be more self-sufficient, more self-sustaining based on infrastructure that I've made? Will it work? Maybe. Will it work the first time? Probably not. But I'm okay with that. I'm becoming okay with that. It's like I'm letting myself accept that that's a possibility rather than going, well, it didn't work those times, so I'm just not going to do that anymore. I'm going to focus on getting to that high salary working for someone else. And I'm just, I don't know. I'm feeling kind of disillusioned with that. So I would love to talk about this more, go into different avenues of, of thought along these lines, but I need to leave the parking structure we're in. I need to go home, see my kids and wife, have a great night with them, go uh, build a company overnight, you know, do all those things. Follow me along on this journey. Let's see what I can figure out. Maybe you can give me some suggestions. I hope everyone else had as great of a Friday as I did. I hope you crushed it. I hope you had an awesome day. And I hope your night is even better. Thank you for watching. Talk to you later.